Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to be joined today by Colonel John Dorian, who's the spokesperson for Operation Inherent Resolve, coming to us from Baghdad. J.D., Happy New Year. Good to see your face again, and we, we look forward to uh, getting an update from you. Outstanding. Good morning. Happy New Year, everyone. We'll start in Syria. We'll move to Iraq. In Syria, the Syrian Democratic Forces, led by their Syrian Arab Coalition, are continuing their advance to isolate Raqqa along two axes, supported by coalition forces providing advice and assistance and coalition air power delivering, uh, delivering counter-ISIL strikes to Raqqa's north and west. Since this current phase began on December 9th, the SDF have liberated more than 500 square miles of Syrian land, home to tens of thousands of people who have been brutalized by ISIL's rule. Coalition airstrikes removed a significant number of ISIL fighters, more than 70 vehicles and 200 fortifications from the battlefield. This degrades ISIL's ability to maneuver and defend the occupied cities. Of these strikes, more than 100 have taken place in the vicinity of Tabqa Dam, killing many ISIL fighters, including Abu Jandal al-Kuwaiti. As you know, Kuwaiti, a prominent foreign fighter and leader, had been sent to improve ISIL's control in the region in the face of SDF's advance. Recovering the Tabqa Dam from ISIL will result in return uh, Syria's largest dam to the Syrians, further allowing them to reclaim their homes and their liberty. We're working with our SDF partners to ensure the dam is effectively and safely recovered. ISIL has used the dam as a headquarters, a prison for high profile hostages, in a training and indoctrination area for leaders since they seized control of it in 2013. Loss of this key terrain will damage the enemy's prospects and legitimacy as they continue to lose territory. In Iraq, Iraqi security forces have made significant progress since initiating phase two of their operation to liberate Mosul on the 29th of December. For phase two, Iraqi forces synchronized simultaneous attacks from three axes into the city, with elements of the Iraqi Counterterrorism Service, the Iraqi Army, and the Iraqi Federal Police conducting the operation. What we're finding is that the synchronized attacks present the enemy with more problems than, than they can solve, and the Iraqi security forces are making progress with the continued benefit of coalition strikes and advisors. The axes are beginning to converge as the Iraqis take, make progress toward the Tigris, in Mosul and other areas around Iraq, precision coalition airstrikes have continued attacking ISIL leaders who facilitate and command and control the terrorist network. The latest examples are three ISIL facilitators and terrorist leaders from occupied cities. I can confirm the deaths of Imad Abdullah Hamad al Mahalawi, Abu Turk, and Fala al Rashidi. Al-Rashidi, struck in December 4th in Mosul, was an ISIL leader who was involved in ISIL's use of V-bids in Mosul. His, remo his removal further degrades ISIL's V-bid threat, which has been the enemy's weapon of choice for attacking Iraqi security forces and civilians. Al-Mahlawi, struck December 21st in Al-Qaim, was a legacy Al-Qaeda Iraq member serving as an ISIL leader in Al-Qaim. His removal will disrupt ISIL's ability to conduct operations along the Euphrates River Valley. This is significant because as ISIL continues to lose population centers, they want to transition towards spoiler attacks in the outlying areas of Iraq and Syria. The loss of Mahlawali degrades ISIL's ability to make that transition. Abu Turk struck on December 4th in Sharkat was an ISIL financial facilitator in Confusa, Iraq, who had connections to ISIL leaders and facilitated funds to the group. He was killed by an airstrike while fighting from the rooftop position in Sharkat, where he and several other fighters were moving a heavy weapon to fire upon partner forces. His removal increases pressure on the ISIL financial network, which is already severely disrupted by several hundred strikes on oil infrastructure and bulk, bulk cash sites. Finally, I wanna show you an important example, a 
of the impact of strikes against the enemy's networks. If you would, please bring up that image. The image that you're seeing now is a screen capture from an ISIL Amok news propaganda video decrying a recent coalition strike against a vehicle that the enemy had been using to transport weapons. The enemy was trying to accuse the coalition of attacking near a protected site. However, they neglected to notice that their own propaganda video confirms the presence of the recoilless rifles that we observed them firing at the ISF. As you recall, the coalition is heavily targeted, the ISIL propaganda machine. This is what happens when the enemy relies on less capable people as their subject matter experts.